that is the cultural representative of the nation, which is buckwheat. So you can say, no, 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 but now we got to say, yes, 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 yes. And I think that is very important, that this is an opportunity to really eliminate the whole business of the pet bottles. There are not enough Bhutanese people to dress themselves up in recycled pet bottles. This is a project we're doing in Spain, eliminating the combustion engines. That's the island, Island del Hierro, an island that has decided to be 100% renewable energy. They're doing the typical things. First is the windmills. Yes, with the pylons, yeah. The excess of the windmills is pumped into water. The water is pumped up and then they have the hydro. And then they're using this biowave technology, 12 megawatt facility of biopower, which moves like the kelps does. Only 40 meters off the coast, submerged and invisible. But what is interesting is that there is now so much electricity on the island that it's been decided to eliminate all combustion engines. And I just want to take you through some of the, the financing. And sorry, it's in euros, but hey, I'm a European. 6,000 islands. We dropped the cost of a car to 11,000 euros, $15,000. $15,000 for an electric vehicle because we don't make people buy the battery. The battery is leased to the government, and I'll explain to you why. The customer only pays 9,000 euros. And basically for 66 million euros, it's possible to replace the complete car fleet with a subsidy of 12,000. But the batteries are leased for 10 years. I don't know the debate about batteries that you have, but the only batteries that I know is the Eli batteries that guarantee you today 10 years of life. I don't know where the other guys are investing their money in, but this one works for 10 years now, with a 20% drop in efficiency. Not about these thousand reloads and plug-in and faster charge. Forget about all that debate. This exists already. Of course, it's not so well known. Daiwa House has invested in it. The government will buy all the batteries and create four recharge units so that the energy that's generated renewably has its backup. We all know we need to synchronize, we need to make certain that there is always a supply. That costs 43 million. A little bit of extra generation of marine power is 3.3 million. And the electricity is sold for the cars at a fixed price. You change your battery once, 10 euros, $15, $14. $14 for your change of battery. And you change your battery automatically. That means by knowing how many people are using this, they're generating over seven years, 58 million. We have just funded the exit of the combustion engine. And I don't need a Tesla at $100,000 a pop. I don't need it. We can make it available to everyone. And the power, this is the largest electrical vehicle project in Europe. But the most important thing is that we can even pay back the subsidies over seven years. We only use it as a little incentive to get going. So what I think is important is that if we now do the economic analysis, isn't that what they want us to do, economics? If we now do the economic analysis, what we're realizing is that the 5.6 million euros that were exported out of the island are now staying in the island. And you know all about local money and flow of money and all, you know, this is working. But when you get 10,000 people on an island doing it, we're planning on that island a very simple strategy, full employment. We're going to use the money to generate the jobs, and therefore we need more innovations. Last two cases. Are you still there? <laughs> Rethinking the forest. And I'm going to talk about, yes, Las Gaviotas. I've been involved with Las Gaviotas since 1984. And it's been a life-changing project. Many of you have heard about it. I'm sure many of you... Who's read the book? Well, here you see the pictures. 
This is the result in 25 years. You go from a savanna with 17 plant species into a forest today with 256 species. You regenerate biodiversity. This is the year of biodiversity. Let's not talk about protecting biodiversity. Let's talk about regenerating biodiversity. Wouldn't that be more positive to go to the kids and say we're going to all regenerate biodiversity? Instead of saying we'll artificially inseminate the tiger so that we will have a couple of tigers left. There are more tigers now, you know, in zoos than there in the wild. And one of the most pervasive strategies to permit cloning, genetic manipulation, is used to exactly say to the public at large, we're saving species from extinction. Here's what we're doing. Tapping the trees. And the original business of gaviotas was to get biochemicals. But 30% is actually turpentine. Now, turpentine is a great fuel. And so in Las Gaviotas, this factory was built last year. So it's not in the book. Last year, this factory was built. And basically what is happening is there is a filtration here of the turpentine and all particles bigger than 10 micron are taken out. And then you have a pure fuel which you can use both in diesel engines and in gasoline engines. And do you recognize this gentleman? Amory Lovins. Amory came to visit because he didn't believe it. He said, I haven't heard about a fuel that powers both. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Amory, let's go. And fortunately, Amory is one of those persons who said, yeah, let's go. So Amory and Judy came over and they visited the place and they said, this is true. So he called up the New York Times. And three weeks later, we we're on the front page of the New York Times with an article about Las Gaviotas but they didn't talk about the fuel. I don't know why we told them. But the most important thing is that we have the trees to give us the fuel. Now, here is the economics. We're selling a fuel and we get money. That money is used to plant more trees, right? No dividends to be paid in Gaviotas. If you plant more trees, you get more wood. If you get more wood, you fix more CO2 and you generate more biofuels. Interesting. We're selling biofuels and we're generating more biofuels. This is how nature works. Nature cascades everything all the time. And if we cascade money the way nature cascades its resources, then there is abundance. We generate jobs. And by the way, we get water as a benefit. Nice, isn't it? Drinking water as a benefit and we're building up social capital. But the most important is that the land was purchased in 84 for one US dollar an acre, and today it's worth $3,000 an acre. Over 25 years, that's a better return than if you would have invested in Microsoft and have held on the shares in Microsoft. Investing in water, food, social capital, Investing in biofuels gives you a better return over 25 years than Microsoft on the NASDAQ. Hey, let's wake up. This is the new economy. This is the way it's going to look like. Because the only way we're going to beat them is by showing we can do better. Only then we will have the respect. And otherwise, we're going to need angel investors and we're going to need consumers willing to pay more. Final case. This is my daughter Chido looking at coffee in Chipenge. Zimbabwe, where she's from, has been boycotted particularly by the European Union and particularly by the UK because of Mugabe's policies. And I'm not here to discuss Mugabe's policies. His atrocities are known. But the Brits haven't done much better before. They stole all the land before. And I do not understand why they are debating why they have to give it back. But Cheeto is not into that debate. Cheeto wants to respond to the needs of the local community. And there is coffee. Zimbabwe used to have the best coffees. But because of the boy...